always wanted as a 45-year-old woman to be brought on by Rob Thomas's Smooth with Santana. I actually fucking remember the 90s. That opening was a little bit painful because I was old enough to have a crush on and be theoretically old enough to hit on Winona Ryder. So, like, that's the 90s, okay? I studied Heathers and then I became a Heather. That's how, that's how my generation did it. Rest y'all with your pumped up kicks. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, um, so yeah, sorry. I, I know I came in real aggressive, but I had a beer. All right, so in case you can't tell, I am a transgender, lesbian, uh, 45 year old with two kids at home and two divorces under my belt, but I'm sure your dating lives are rough too. friendly. So the thing, <laughs> the thing about having an artisanal handcrafted vagina, you know, as opposed to the farm to table model you must y'all are rocking. is that it wants to close back up because your body's like, hey, there's a new hole, let's fix it. And you're like, not this time, it's like an ear piercing, it's pretty and it was expensive, leave it alone. <laughs> so just like, just like with an ear piercing, in order to keep yourself open to the universe, you need to get yourself some studs. <laughs> no. I told the hospital no, so they provided to me at no extra charge four beautiful artisanal handcrafted kitchen grade ceramic dildos. Nine inches long, each one. Uh, you know, and they're they're different girths for different worths, you know what I mean? And like they're in mid-century modern colors, which was a really nice touch, like powder blue and mint green, harvest gold. Fuck me purple, all the colors that you want in a fucking ceramic non-ridged for nobody's pleasure dildo. And what you do in order to like, is you just lube them up and shove them in there three times a day for 10 minutes at a time and just hold them there until you've done your duty. You know, the way our ancestors had sex. Now, three times a day is a lot for anybody. I mean, that's more frequently than anybody in here experiences happiness. So like, that's a real <laughs> chart. But don't worry, it decreases as time goes on. The more open you become, the less you have to do it. But you do have to start to like increase your girth. That's why they give you the different measurements. You just start shoving larger and larger ceramic implements. It, it's like a fucked up game of Chubby Bunny, honestly. It's, it's sort of like you start with one marshmallow and like, oh, I'm a vagina. And then you get to the bigger one and you're like, oh, 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 oh. It's very affirming. I found out about this after the surgery because I did no research. And <laughs> I asked my doctor, like, what the fuck? I know that doesn't sound like a question, but what have you said about the fuck in a statement form? You know what I mean? Like, that's a question. So I said, what the fuck? And he said, no, this is really important to your vaginal health. And I was like, but you're a man. Do I have to listen to you? And I guess in this case, like, he broke it, so I bought it, and whatever. So I did, I, I had to listen to him. And I said, but like, no, like, do I really, what happens if I miss a session? And apparently the answer is it just goes, and it's back to Claire's, right? So. <laughs> nobody wants that second trip to Claire's, trust me. Um, and I said, really, it's that severe? And then he said, no, 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 but like, Karina, I really want you to stick to your regimen because this is some of my best work. Yeah. 
I can't believe that a woke ass audience in 2019 just cheered a 70 year old man telling me my vagina was his best work. Fuck him. I was writing to Mason. I'm like, no, that was my best work, okay? I'm the modeling clay. You are the three year old, all right? Like, that is how I felt about it. I was like, pepper spray, pepper spray, back off my puss. Thanks for putting your thumb in me. That's my dinosaur, okay? Like, that's mine now. But honestly, thanks for cheering for my pussy. I needed that. Anyway, um, he said that's some of my best work, and I asked him to explain. And he said, "Well, Karina, you're so tall. I was able to give you a tremendous amount of volume." And then he quoted that volume to me in liters. Like a grocery store amount of liters. Does anybody else have this spec on their Subaru? Like is this like that's not how vaginas are measured. Nobody nobody goes up to a new mother and says, Oh what a beautiful three liter baby, right? Like that's just how did he even take a liquid volume measurement? I am not an Erlenmeyer flask, right? Did you make markings in there? Did you mix a batch of Kool-Aid in there and then taste it? Like, how did you do that? Too far, too soon, I don't care. So I listen to him, and every time I travel for work, I bring my dildos with me, my magic wands. I call them my magic wands. I'm sorry I call them my magic wands because they like keep me open to the universe. And there's four of them so I can name them Gryffindor and Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw and um, shit, um, not Slytherin, that's, you don't name a dildo Slytherin. That's disgusting. No, the big one's Hagrid. Anyway, um, I put them in my carry-on because I figured the TSA would say all oh, those are obviously medical implements. But no, according to the Transportation Safety Administration, my dilators are a bludgeoning weapon. <laughs> They're not wrong. You walk into me at the wrong moment, I'm gonna throw these detached nunchucks at your fucking nuts, okay? Like so, like yeah, that's that's true. But anyway, so what they did is they took them through the machine and then they held them up. They pulled them out with their little gloves. They put their gloves on, like rude, like I don't wash them, right? Pulled them out and held them up one at a time in front of everybody at Austin Bergstrom so they could all see, like, power of Grayskull. I'm like, no, no, no. Everybody's staring. All the white people are looking at me like, oh, what did you do wrong to fuck up our security experience? Because that's all anybody cares about, right? Like, oh, yeah, first it was the shoe bomber, and now there's some sort of, like, fucking dildo terrorist. <laughs> now we're going to have to empty our vaginas out before we get on the plane. I don't want to do that. That's where I keep my Kool-Aid. You know, that's what the white women are thinking. So he's holding them up, and while everybody's staring, that's when he chose to ask me, like, what are these for? I was like, I don't want to talk about that in public if I'm not getting drink tickets, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's so private. So I just told him, look, vaginas are a lot of maintenance. And he let me go. That was it. That was, that was no follow-up questions. That's the open sesame for the TSA. Fellas, you can try this too. Just say vaginas are a lot of maintenance. And you can bring your Glock on. I don't, I, they, they just don't give a shit at that point. They're like, oh my god, we're way too busy, busy regulating these uh, to understand how they work. Oh my god, did I get the light? Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, <laughs> so recently I had to use the men's room for the first time in five years. Um, and like five years is a long time. Like you ever go back to your high school after five years and like, oh my God, the culture changed and all the slang is different and there's a new fine arts facility, right? It's scary. I didn't want to go in there. I didn't know like how to communicate anymore, but I had to because there was a yellow cone outside of the women's restroom that said somebody was cleaning in there. And no matter how corrupt and shitty things get in America, that yellow cone is the one sign we've all agreed to obey. <laughs> Like stop signs, no smoking signs, don't bring your guts in here signs, fuck them all, but don't go in there, we're cleaning, okay. <laughs> so I go in the meds, does anybody, has 
any women, do, do, do women in here have like a, a, like a tactic for going into the men's room that they want to like share with the, the class? Just walk in. Like confidence? Confidence is key, right? Walk in just like, I belong here. I gave birth to all of you motherfuckers. Did anybody knock? No. I've heard people tell me they knock, and I'm like, that is the surest way to tell men that there's a woman outside the women's restroom. Because men don't fucking knock. They're like, oh, it's a, it's a chick. Right? Like, it's, right. I decided, okay, confidence was key, but I also have this thing called trans privilege. I know you've never heard of it before, but it's a real thing. And trans privilege means that I can open a men's restroom door and go, so fellas. And just like ride a cloud of cognitive dissonance all the way into the stall. Looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good. That chick's tits were nice, but she sounded like... Anyway, anyway, so, anyway. What I decided to do in that moment was a little weird. I, I kind of combined the two, and I kicked open the men's restroom door. And I just went... All the way into the stall, I just flipped off everybody, went to the stall, sat down, thought, I did it. You know? I did it, I'm safe. I'm in here, I got in the stall. And then like, you know how you just have to pee, but like you, once you've spread your cheeks, you're, you just, your body's just a little like test tube, just a little tiny, like just a little like, see what's under the hood, just like, you know, you know, rev the car and park, kind of just test it, and just like, it's, you don't want to do it, but like you've got to, it's just a tiny fart. And honestly, should we fart anywhere except for in the toilet? That's the most polite place to fart, okay? Like that is like where the greenhouse gas emissions should go, which is into the sewer system where they can't pollute in the atmosphere. I feel like the EPA should pay every American five dollars every time they fart in a toilet instead of contributing to global warming. Like, so like, is it my fault? that I farted while on the toilet? No, that's like the place to fart. But I farted just a tiny, just a little bit, like a dollar fart, just a one dollar fart, okay? Just a little, just a tiny little fart. And the guy on the other side of the stall wall laughed at me. And not like a jovial ha ha ha, the human experience, we're all in it together laugh, no. It was a high-pitched, you're never gonna be cool giggle. And that triggered something deep inside of me because I was just like, fuck off! And after I yelled fuck off, I waited for a response. None was forthcoming. The conversation had ended and I had won, right? Like, do you understand how I'm killing it in this bathroom experience? Like, I was nailing it, right? Real chuffed. I should probably have uh, mentioned at this point that I was very drunk. <laughs> and that all of this was taking place at a Chuck E. Cheese. I don't know why. Look, they serve wine there, okay? Like, mom pack. When you all are in your mid-40s, okay, you can go to Chuck E. Cheese and drink wine. You don't even have to bring your kids. They still have to serve you. <laughs> So I finished my voluminous wine piss, pat my puss dry, pull myself back together, exit the stall, and I turn and I immediately run into the person who laughed at me. And he was an 11 year old boy. What do you do? Right? I'm not going to apologize. I have a women's studies minor. You know, like, I don't need to. I'm not apologizing to this asshole. But at the same time, like, his look on his face, like, just imagine for a second the experience he had, right? Let's, like, experience some empathy for an 11-year-old boy, just briefly, right? So he's at a birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese. He has to pee. He doesn't even ask permission. He's a big boy. He goes to the men's room, opens the door, goes in, goes up to the urinal. Whips out whatever he's got. Ain't much, but he's 11, he's feeling confident. He starts pissing. All of a sudden, behind him, a mom kicks open the restroom door, flips off everybody in the bathroom, stagger 
us into the stall, falls down on the toilet, farts. He laughs at it because he's 11. She tells him to fuck off. Now this mom is staring at him in the eyes, and for some reason, she's huge. She's like way bigger than any mom he's ever seen before. Like even though moms came in this size, like she's got Aaron Jordan 14s on her feet, right, motherfucker? What is this mom gonna do? She's a loose motherfucking cannon. He's a loving. He can't handle this much mom staring at him in the eyes, right? His look was sheer terror. His mouth was dropped open. His eyes were the size of dollar bills. Whatever this mom says to him is gonna color his men's restroom experiences for the rest of his goddamn life. That is a responsibility on my shoulders as I hulk over him, staring at him, drunk in a Chuck E. Cheese. What do I say to this kid? I said, good, and I left.